Hello everybody, it is Badger Wild and we are back with another Space Engineer ship classification video where I go through and just kind of give an un, like a loose understanding or a set of guidelines for building your ships in Space Engineers. Uh, the purpose of this is not, and, and I have a lot of people asking questions so there's an easy way to solve a lot of these other questions that I'm getting. This is not like the definitive guide. It is basically just telling everyone, "Hey, uh, this is what a ship does. This is how we're. This is how the ships are classified." I've said this in an earlier video that the ships are basically being classified. This is the one thing you will find within nautical ship classifications on Earth, and that is they are usually based. The class is usually based by what the ship is supposed to do, and then it is usually. Whether that is a, like with frigates, for instance, whether it is a missile frigate, whether it is a gun frigate or a stealth frigate or a logistical frigate, you have to know all this so that you can, you know, if you want to make them proper or do something like that. As far as ship designs or size goes, I usually build my ships uh, starting with the maximum 35 blocks with a Corvette and then simply doubling it uh, on frigates. Destroyers and assault ships are double the length of a Corvette. And then after that, cruisers and carriers are double the length of whatever a frigate or destroyer would be. So without any further ado, uh, let's get started because today we are talking about probably the new meta of Space Engineers. This is something that everyone's been wanting to be the meta, but for a long time, it, it's kind of weird. Space Engineers has gone through this thing where the natural evolution of ships has kind of mirrored the same evolution uh, as nautical time warfare. And for the longest time, battleships and cruisers were the big namestay killers in a fleet. Uh, if you were building ships in Space Engineers, you built uh, destroyers, you built frigates, you built cruisers, you built battleships. Because one, you're, there's a limit to how many people you can put into a navy, and you're very limit, and that limitation makes it very difficult for you to operate more than one ship. Now, as of recently, I believe it was the AI update, things have changed. Carriers have now become a viable and quite lethal addition to space engineers. Now, now if you do not have a character or a carrier, character carrier, oh boy, are you in for some trouble because these things are quite powerful. Uh, Last End Gamers, I did a video on Last End Gamers thing where uh, Aaron from As from where Aaron mentioned that launching drones with rail guns was quite deadly, and they are a, a drone with any type of heavy weaponry as its single purpose that can shoot a target, then turn around, come back, and rearm is a significant threat. And the fact that carriers now you can carry several of them. So this is what we're going through is the carrier edition of Space Engineers, class ship classification. And we're going to start with this first one here to give you an idea of what you can do with a carrier. Now, a carrier should have some point defense because your biggest threat to a carrier is not going to come from other ships, in my opinion. Now, you may have destroyers and stuff. That's where your buddy uh, can come in or you can have an AI destroyer that holds your position with a crap ton of guns and just unloads on anything that tries to get too close to you. You can do that. Uh, AI blocks have enabled massive fleets now. You can have several fleets and build your entire carrier force with the ability to have a few ships to defend yourself and have another couple of ships go in and fight for you. But to build a good carrier, you are going to need that point defense because point defense is absolutely necessary. Custom turrets... Gatlin guns, small, these uh, smaller interior turrets. Interior turrets will just lay waste to a small block ship. And that's what you're going to be running into is small block ships uh, pretending to be missiles or things of that nature. Now, one of the cool things about this particular one is we have uh, doors for the inside and we've got storage on the top of the ship. These ships can be launched up top. And I'm not sure what goes on inside this bad boy. Let's see. Do we have a button to open it up? No, we don't. Ah, uh, I'll have to look into this later. But, like I said, you've got good all-round PDC coverage, a decent amount of armor. This thing is not meant to go in there and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with another ship. 
it has smaller ships for that. <clears throat> and like I said, the purpose of the carrier, your weapons are not big guns. It's not missiles. Your weapons are your fighters or bombers or whatever strike craft you have on the ship. Now, we did cover a little bit of this with assault ships. You know, assault ships can carry some fighters. But the carrier primarily sends a whole bunch of fighters into an area and starts just hammering away at it. Another cool thing about carriers is they do not have to be symmetrical at all. You can get some asymmetry going on. I love this ship. <laughs> Modern carriers in real life are very asymmetrical. And this one here just, just takes the cake. I can't even tell you which one it is. But, oh yeah, it's good. You see here we've got top coverage right here. We have enough space for about four fighters up top. You can do more. But then coming down here, we've got internal storage for up to five other small ships that we can bring in, repair, and then launch. Once again, we're not talking... Well, this one does have a couple of big cannons. It's probably like armament on one broad side. And you got some assault cannons. But this is not going to be doing a whole lot of damage to another ship. More than likely, it is all up top. We also got what appears to be a set of doors here. What do we have here? We may have some missiles that this thing can fire as well. So this is kind of like an all-round carrier. Probably a battle carrier would be the best way to describe this one. But <clears throat> the advantage of this is you've got all these extra ships. You turn them loose. The carrier can just sit back at a distance and fight. Same with, the, with this one over here. Uh, this one here, it also is about the same thing. It's basically your carrier, if you're going to build it, is going to be either a box or a platform. So you have, over here, you have platforms up top. You can have a combination of both. It's not a big deal. And then you go inside and you've got storage for more ships internally. Now this one will carry, it looks like, up to three craft. These are probably going to be like bombers or something. And then you have the ability to carry far more strike craft up on top. And you'll notice we've got a decent amount of PVC coverage. We've got at least some guns on this. Not as much as I would like to have. I would say if you're going to put guns on a carrier, you should have at least two in the front and two in the back. Uh, if you want to get even more crazier, you should probably double that up so you've got a large amount of PDC coverage in all directions. Moving on, we're getting to an older carrier here. Uh, some of y'all will notice this carrier as the most popular ship on Space Engineers. And yes, it turns out it's a carrier. Now, this carrier does not have a platform to land ships on, but it does have a very good size hangar here, which going through here, you can see we can load up to about eight small ships that can be brought in of various sizes and calibers and they can be launched to the front and to the sides another thing about carriers if you're going to build them do consider the through deck comp consideration one of the things about carriers and I'll, I'll head over here and show this modern carriers have what's called an angle deck now and an angle deck the purpose of the angle deck is so that a fighter can get in and not clog up what's going on. This is my one gripe about this particular ship here in the middle, though it does look amazing. Is right here, unless these are some really short fighters, you are going to run into the problem of if you've got a fighter that comes in and lands here, these four in the back are going to be useless. You're not going to be able to use them until you can move that one fighter out of the way. So that's something to think about with a through deck, and that's what you have here. You have two through decks as well as a front opening deck for smaller strike craft. So every ship in here can get out as well as this one. You have a through deck. The through deck enables ships to come in and go out. Having about three is probably not a bad idea, but this enables you to bring one ship in while you're allowing another ship to leave. Very nice. We now have another uh, method of launching ships, which is racks. And this is a... I don't know if you'd call this a carrier. More of an assault ship, I would probably figure. Uh, in the light, very, very light assault ship category. But here your fighters are loaded up into a series of racks. Similar to the... Oh, what is the series? Battlestar Galactica's toaster racks. Where the Cylons just start dropping out. This is where you would probably put all your troops... And then when this thing gets ready to launch, somebody hops into here, hops into the ship, and whew, out it goes. Uh, it's As I said before, all these ships have very good PDC coverage. So you, with a turret like this, you should have, or with a ship like this, you should have some good PDC coverage. You can also see here the use of custom PDC guns. 
These are twin Gatlin, twin gun Gatlin turrets that can turn and fight and fire at everything coming in. The, these will be devastating to a smaller ship trying to get in close and get uh, onto a target. But yeah, as you can see, the carrier going through space, it is a transport medium. You've got to think of this as a battleship without guns. That's what they are. They are basically battleships with zero guns. Uh, in other words, ship-to-ship -ship guns. You can have a few, but that should not be your primary weapon system. Your primary weapon should be your strike craft. Another thing that's not a bad idea on these that I could not see on any of these ships is the use of a printing station and storage. Because if you can print more ships off and send them into combat, oh man, you have way more firepower at your disposal. Uh, you can start sending in more ships off of a blueprint system and replenish your ships on the fly. Uh, that's, that's a great idea as well. By the way, yeah, these are carriers. That's how the carrier works, and that's how they're operating space nears. These are basically the new meta. Okay, if you're you're going to go wreck somebody's base or wreck somebody in space, this is the ship that goes in and gets it done. You launch a couple strike craft with assault cannons and rail guns or some rockets, and you would be amazed at how fast just five small type ships with no armor can just wreck most of the NPC ships in the game right now. And that's not even with anything outranging those ships. They can come in there with just missiles. Just a, just a tube of missile launchers firing away and then running back to base when they get done. By the way, folks, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it was informative and you guys will make some great carriers off it. You got some inspiration from this. Also, like with any of these videos, if you guys will go into the comment section and tell me which one of these you want a review on, I will review it for you. Uh, these are some awesome builds that I found on the workshop. And if you want to know where they are or you want a, an idea of what these are, I will do a review video with a link in the description. I've already done this with several ships that people have requested seeing. So you guys can do that as well. Also, don't forget to check me out on Rumble. Right now, we are getting our videos are now loading up pretty regularly now. So you guys can go over there and support us with a couple views there. And uh, don't forget the subscribe star, which is just basically a tip dar tip jar you guys want to go over there and just toss a dollar in my direction to help out the channel a bit buy me a little food or something like that i've mostly i'm on the job i'm drinking soda and, and milky ways so if y'all want to get me a milky way sometime hey y'all can do that you can throw a dollar that way and get me something good out of it anyway as usual if you're new be sure to subscribe i put out videos like this twice a week if i can and as always Stay safe, stay frosty, folks. See you guys in the next video. Goodbye for now.